Migration experts say we're living in an age of migration. Populist politics and some media have sensationalized events, suggesting that those on the move today constitute a new crisis of unmanageable numbers. More chaos in Central Europe amid the migrant crisis. The issue of migration into Germany is currently such a huge point of contention. We all agree that we have to better protect our external borders even more. Do not come to Europe. Do not believe the smugglers. Others reject this perspective as lacking compassion, sidestepping international responsibilities, bad economics when labor demand is still high, or just evidence of prejudice and xenophobia. Migration today has become a most divisive and polemic issue. It's headline news every day. The fact is, International migrants are only about 3% of the global population, and this proportion has changed very little in the last century or more. Instead of a separated issue, migration is part of a transnational shift that is reshaping societies and politics around the world. It's part of global social transformation, but they are calling this an age of migration. Because contemporary migration has changed. The absolute number is higher than ever. It is occurring in a changed world with different conditions, different tolerances and anxieties, and high impact. Much of the public concern of contemporary migration is directed at what we call mixed migration and complex flows. Mixed migration refers to cross-border movements of people including those fleeing persecution and conflict, victims of trafficking, and people seeking better lives and opportunities. Some refugees live in camps, but millions live in out-of-camp situations and urban ghettos, in tough, precarious conditions and with severely limited life opportunities. Many of them feel their lives are on hold, mostly in neighboring countries, often countries already struggling to meet the needs of their own citizens themselves. As a result, many refugees feel compelled, as most of us would, to find alternative options wherever they can. Beyond refugees, a large number of predominantly young and technologically connected migrants seek better lives and better opportunities in richer and more stable countries. Both groups join the mixed flows, choosing onward movement to a place that they hope offers them safety and a better future. Those in mixed migration flows travel along similar routes, using similar means of travel, often traveling irregularly and wholly or partially assisted by migrant smugglers. Although entitled to protection under international human rights law, they are exposed to multiple rights violations along their journey. Everywhere we are going to eat, they beat us. We are going in inside, they will beat us. We are just like slaves. Sure, I was sued. Some people wonder if the numbers on the move are too big, that states aren't able to cope, that multiculturalism and too much diversity is problematic and undesirable. What rights do people in mixed migration flows have to move? What responsibilities do countries have to those in these flows as they pass through their land? We will begin working on an impenetrable, beautiful southern border wall. What to do with rising numbers of failed asylum seekers resisting return home? Even where refugees and migrants were previously welcomed, there is a new anxiety over national identity, creating political pressures hard to ignore. And so, now we see borders have become more closed or pushed further away, and restrictions to entry for many countries increase. At a policy level and in public debate, the focus is often whether protecting borders deserves prominence over protecting people. Unsurprisingly, 
the rise in the number of people looking to smugglers as their saviors or dream fixers is rising in direct proportion to the impossibility of legal means and pathways. And it's happening all over the world, but those in mixed migration flows using irregular pathways often face severe human rights abuses along the journey or perish through misadventure. Italian rescue divers have recovered dozens more bodies from the submerged migrant boat which sank within sight of the Italian island of Lampedusa last week. When lorries get stuck, traffickers abandon migrants. But there are no rescue missions here. Many die in the extreme heat, but you will never hear about it. To what extent are policies causing these deaths? Those in these mixed flows are still a very small proportion of overall migration but it's a phenomenon with a lot of political noise. At least 100,000 marched in more than 700 planned protests. UN member states have adopted the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants that underpins the protection, dignity and human rights of people crossing borders. There are no easy answers. Our world today is more globalized than ever and faces all kinds of new challenges. Global population is rising fast in some places and reducing in others. Experts think the overall population will not level out until 2100 at over 11 billion, up from today's 7.5 billion. The global pie is divided very unequally. Billions of people live in unpromising environments of poor governance, experiencing absence of freedoms, endemic poverty, social and cultural restrictions, and limited or poor services. Most refugees today come from protracted and complex civil wars that don't look like ending soon. Despite global commitments to the sustainable development goals, these situations will only change slowly. Displacement and mobility is not going to quietly slip away. This is the new age of migration. With a more globalized world and significant demographic changes underway, many countries face tough political and social policy decisions around all aspects of migration, labor movement, compassion, responsibilities, and rights for those uprooted and seeking refuge or seeking better lives. New global processes have been initiated. The Global Migration and Refugee Compacts are wrestling with the dilemmas and deals are being struck. But how many of these are being realistic about the longer term challenges? The big question is, how will we all respond? Offering responses raises many difficult questions for politicians and policymakers and societies themselves. The Mixed Migration Centre aims to contribute to the debate and improve policies and responses by providing solid data, in-depth research and evidence-based analysis.